Okay, so season one is currently underway. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to YouTube in general, usually you want to be first, okay? You want to get your content uploaded, rendered, all the other good stuff as quickly as possible. And that's because you're competing with millions of other people on this wonderful fucking planet that are essentially doing the same thing you are, and that's uploading shit to YouTube. And the only reason why I'm mentioning this at all is because for the three people that actually fucking watch me, you might be wondering where is my thoughts, where is my video, when it comes to how I feel about matchmaking, how I feel about ranking and things like that. I wanted to actually spend a little bit of time with it before coming to a conclusion because if I would have just uploaded a video after a couple of fucking matches, let's just say I probably wouldn't have been a very happy boy, okay? Anyways, let's get to it. When I queue up into this competitive matchmaking, for some reason, I seem to do a lot better, and I mean a lot better, when I'm queuing up solo, or if I'm queuing up with one, or at the very fucking most, two other people. Now you might be saying to yourself, hey dude, that's bullshit. If you're going in as a group, logic tells you you should be able to actually have a better chance at performing well. That's not true. That's not fucking true. That's highly circumstantial and situational. It depends on who's on your fucking team, okay? And the thing that I noticed is, if you have a couple of fucking weak links on your team, you're going to feel the wrath of a team that doesn't. And I think the chances and the likelihood of you actually facing another team that is pretty solid and things like that is more likely when you're queuing up as a six-man team. Now, I don't know if this is fact, or if this is just the way it seems to me. But for me, and speaking solely for myself, when I queue up with one or two capable players, people that I know can play the game, or again, a lot of the times I was just queuing up solo, I was having much more success when it comes to winning matches. It was, as a matter of fact, night and day from when I was actually playing on a six-man group. So I highly recommend, if you're going to go at this, attack this Season 1. Well, you're going to have to make a decision. You're going to have to make a choice and more importantly be okay with it. Are you willing to take sacrifices? And when I say sacrifices, in this particular case, I'm talking about fucking losing. Because that's what you might be doing a lot of if you decide to play with a six-man group full of people that are your friends that actually might not fucking play all that well. And of course, it goes without saying, if you have five friends at your disposal that are also great at this game, that's a fucking bonus. That's huge. You don't have to make any sacrifices. I don't have that luxury. <laughs> I have maybe one or two. I actually have a couple of friends that play shooters competitively, like at a professional level. And I hate using that word professional because a lot of people don't like that. They don't see it, okay, when it comes to video games and being able to play them professionally. But the thing is, they do make an honest living. Uh, from playing fucking video games. And the thing is, with them, they're on a different level than me. I wouldn't even ask to play with them. I would not put them in that situation, okay? I would be uncomfortable asking, more importantly, selfish. And that's what I'm trying to get at here. Whether it's video games, whether it's other life things, sometimes you have a goal, okay? And your friends get in the way of that fucking goal. But if the goal is important to you, you might actually have to just separate your friendship and the fucking thing that it is that you're trying to accomplish. And if they are truly your friends, they'll understand and be okay with it. If not, they're fucking dicks and they never were your friends. Now, what I'm trying to get at is this. When it comes to this game, I think a lot of people are caught off guard when it comes to skill sailing. It's one thing to read the word skill sailing or have a understanding about it. And it's another thing to actually see the effects of a high skill ceiling. And a lot of people got hit by a Mack truck, or at least it felt like it when they actually caught a glimpse of it, because a lot of people did not catch a glimpse of that until they were actually getting placed. Uh, the placement, if you don't know, in this particular game is pretty much like a gauntlet, okay? They make you play 10 games, and then they judge your performance based on the competition they're pitting you against. And then at the end of it, when you come out the other side of the placement, they attach you with a numerical rating in terms of your rank. And of course, when you win, it goes up. When you lose, it goes down. I'll get into that in just a minute. And for those that know me, you know that I cannot pass up on the opportunity to say that I told you so. And it's not because I'm some sort of all-seeing eye or fortune teller. 
It's common sense, and I was just paying attention, that's all. And I'm sure many of you were also aware that a lot of people were in for a rude awakening. I also talked about how I thought Blizzard might actually delay the competitive play in the ranking system and all that, but they did not. They actually followed through, and I respect them for that. And the reason why I thought they were going to delay it in the first place is because I'm pretty sure that Blizzard also knew that this was going to be a fucking rude awakening for a ton of people because a lot of people right now are having a hard time they don't understand what's going on like why are they getting their asses kicked so bad I actually talked about this at length I saw this coming a fucking mile away the thing is with this fucking game in Blizzard is that they make everyone feel like a fucking winner more importantly they hide some of the stats that actually matter that are actually part of the process when it comes to knowing what you're doing wrong and how to actually improve them you need to get the entire picture not just the bright sides okay not just the gold fucking medals that they hand out like candy I mean anytime someone's doing shitty on my team the first thing they feel like is their trump card is hey I got four medals yeah dude it's not hard to get fucking medals in this game especially with Bastion especially with a fucking healer it's not hard so you have this game that's trying to be as accessible as possible to as many people as possible trying to make everyone feel like a fucking winner and then when it comes crunch time people find out the hard way holy shit what just happened I'm not as good as I thought I was. But that just scratches the surface because you also have a bunch of people out there that blame cheaters, aimbots, hacks. They just can't comprehend that people can actually play as good as they are within the competitive scene. I mean, not being able to get out of the spawn point, you know, getting headshotted constantly, things like that. But here's the thing. With this game, like many others, if you have a well-organized group of players, they don't even have to be great. They just have to know what they're doing, be capable. It's going to feel like they're hacking if you're on a shit team. And unfortunately, it took this to truly understand and come to terms with, well, maybe you haven't done the last part yet, but to truly get an idea of your level of play and your teammate's level of play. And a part of this problem I'm going to shift over to Overwatch and Blizzard. Because they in fact do hide fucking certain stats that I think are critical to the whole learning process. To understand what areas need work, what you're doing wrong. Because in my opinion, for example, a healer should not be dying 15, 20 times in a match. I'm just saying. I'm just putting that out there. She should not be leading the charge either. I'm sorry to break the news to you aggressive fucking healers out there. The healers should not be leading the fucking charge. They're not the spearhead of this operation. And so, Blizzard did away with showing kill-death ratios. Blizzard took a look at all these other shooters and seen some of the things that made people upset, discouraged people from playing, things like that, and they eliminated it in this fucking game. Which, some of that stuff is pretty awesome, but let me tell you something. Sometimes you need people to actually see your stats so they can call you out for playing like shit so you can understand that you're shit. But more importantly, you got a video game that's patting you on the head and the rear during this whole fucking process up until this point telling you you are awesome. You got all these gold medals, you're a great player, oh you made play of the game. You must be a beast at this. And it's just been a really rude awakening for a lot of people. And I'm going to say this, I'm not going to blame them completely. You know, it's not cool to start, you know, accusing people of hacking. I shouldn't use the word hack. It's not hack, it's cheating and things like that. Uh, that's not cool. You know, you shouldn't be doing that, throwing that kind of thing around. I'm not saying that cheaters don't exist in this game. I'm sure somebody, somehow, somewhere, someplace, they figured out how to do it, okay? I'm just saying, for the most part, what you're seeing is more than likely a huge gap in terms of skill. More importantly, I'm trying to emphasize that a team doesn't have to be all that much better to make you look silly. They just need to be organized. And if your fucking team is not organized, it's going to suck. It's going to completely suck. And it's going to feel terrible losing that way. I get it. I understand it. I played a couple of matches where I got fucking hammered. 
but I understood what I was saying. I was able to assess the situation, and that is because I have experience with other first-person shooters, other games, and because a lot of people don't, they might not be able to do so as easily. Okay, I understood completely why we were getting our shit pushed in. I mean, think about it, this game does have a wall hack built into it as a super, as an alt. So this other team that's well organized has the exact positioning in terms of where our team is, the Bad News Bears. You know, my teammates are picking Torbs as fucking attack heroes. I mean, seriously, it's a combination of different things. And by the way, if you're one of those types of people that just will not pick another character for the life of you, you're going to hurt your team every single fucking time. You're going to have to be willing to fucking counter pick. You're going to have to be willing to get out of your comfort zone. If not, you're not only going to fucking hurt your team tremendously, you're going to look like a selfish fuck in the process. Okay, you're playing this game like it's all about you, and that's cool and everything, if it was a single player game. Unfortunately, this is a six man versus six man or girl set up here. It's not just about you and your goddamn fucking medals that are worthless. It's about winning. This game is about winning. And although this game might make everyone feel like a winner at the end of a game, there's always one winner and one fucking loser. For me, speaking for myself, I personally do not get any kind of enjoyment and fun out of losing. So why you keep picking that fucking Bastion or whatever character you're picking, because that's the only one you want to fucking play, that's the only one you can get these useless fucking medals for, and you keep coming up with these things like, hey, it's all about having fun, man. You're taking this game way too seriously. You can keep blowing that smoke out your ass, trying to divert attention away from where it should be. More importantly, trying that reverse psychology on a six-year-old. Okay, people are going to see right through you, motherfucker, so please stop that shit. This is not a solo fucking game. It's not a solo experience. So stop being a selfish cocksucker and pretending like because you paid $40 for this game, you're going to make it a solo experience. You're going to make it all about you and how you have fun and how you collect these fucking medals. You have other people on your fucking team, man. So please, do me a favor, do everyone else a favor. If you're going to have this kind of an attitude where you're not willing to work with others, do not step into the fucking season.